Welcome back to this week's technical. For those of you who are new to the channel, these are short overviews of specific topics related to farm animal health, welfare, and performance. If you haven't seen these videos before, you find this one useful, feel free to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get updates and new videos. Give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. For this video, we are following up the last technical where we were talking about worming use at lambing. So, where were we? In the last video, we talked about how in late pregnancy and lactation, the nutritional stress on the ewes results in a relaxation of immunity that then leads to increased worm egg output from the ewes. This is known as the PPR or the periparturian rise. That contributes to fecal contamination of pasture and that has a negative effect on their lambs as they grow up and then graze at that contaminated pasture. So where we left it, we asked, would it just be sensible to treat all ewes at lambing? So to kill this worm burden, to reduce fecal egg output, reduce pasture contamination, and therefore reduce risk to the lambs. But we said it wasn't that simple. One thing I touched on last time was that the extent of the PPR varied between ewes, and that varies depending on a number of factors. And those are the factors we're gonna talk about today. So we'll start with the big one, and that is nutrition. Remember, the whole reason for the PPR, that late pregnancy, early lactation, is when the ewe is under most nutritional stress. She's having to grow a lamb or lambs, she's having to prepare for lambing, and she's having to develop her udder and produce colostrum. These are all very metabolically expensive activities, and something has to give. That shortfall is typically met by the immune system, hence there's that relaxation in immunity towards worms, hence the increased fecal egg output, hence the increased partial contamination. There is more and more evidence to suggest that ewes that are in good body condition and that are adequately fed have a much less severe PPR than those that are under increased nutritional stress. Protein especially appears to play a very important role. And DUP, that is the digestible undegradable protein or bypass protein. Traditionally, a source of that would have been soya. We're using less and less of that these days for environmental reasons, but that type of protein does appear to be particularly important because of its particular amino acid profile. Feeding regimes that enhance body condition score and dietary protein reduce fecal egg output significantly. The next factor is litter size. So we've said the PPR in large part appears to be down to nutritional stress. Well, nutritional stress is likely to be more severe for a ewe that's growing and feeding two or three lambs rather than just one. Hence the PPR tends to be more severe in ewes that are having twins or triplets than singles. Saying that the work from nutrition suggests that litter size is less important than nutritional status. Well-fed twins and even triplets seem to have fecal egg outputs comparable to singles. Perhaps being a twin or a triplet simply exacerbates an existing shortfall in energy or protein. The final factor is breed and genetics. We know that some breeds typically have a less marked PPR than others. So the hill breeds of sheep in the UK tend to have a less severe PPR than more lowland breeds or crossbreeds like mules. We know that this trait is heritable, perhaps not as heritable as some of the terminal traits like growth or confirmation, but there is a heritable factor. So there is some work by some breed companies and some breed societies on selecting sheep for worm resistance. These sheep should have lower fecal egg outputs as ewes and therefore should have less of a need for treating at lambing. Now this is something still, at least in the UK, in its relative infancy, the data sets are relatively small. We're still looking for the best ways to select sheep on worm resistance. So it is definitely one to watch, but we certainly don't have it all nailed down yet. So some of you will still be sitting there asking, right, so am I treating my ewes or not? Well, I'm afraid there is no one size fits all. There's no nice decision tree for you to follow. And to be honest, this isn't the appropriate forum for dispensing specific advice to specific flocks. This is about introducing you to the general principles which you can then apply, hopefully in consultation with an advisor like your vet or your nutritionist. Fundamentally, it has to be someone that A, has the expertise and B, you trust. And increasingly, farmers are being asked to apply these principles. Remember, unnecessary treatments mean unnecessary expense, unnecessary effort, and increased pressure for selection of worms that are resistant to these products. Avoiding all of those things, to me, seems like a good thing. If you're asking me what appears to have the biggest influence on the PPR, and what sheep keepers have greatest influence over in the run-up to lambing, in my opinion, 
that would appear to be nutrition. So investing a little time and money in body condition scoring, use at lambing, and actually throughout the year in making sure that the ration you're feeding singles, twins, and triplets is supplying them with adequate protein and energy. Those are relatively simple sums. I will attach the link to the Feeding the You technical manual in the video description. And if you're in any doubt, talking to your vet, perhaps taking some blood samples for energy and protein. This is very simple, very good value. All of that is going to be time and money well invested. Once you've determined the nutritional status of your ewes, if you haven't already, bring your vet in on those discussions and from there work out which ewes you think should or shouldn't be wormed. And you can always mark your own homework by taking fecal egg counts of untreated ewes to make sure they don't go sky high. And worms aside, we know that you nutrition is fundamental to so many other things. Lamb survival, colostrum production, you mastitis, you name it, nutrition plays a role. So even if it has no effect on worms, there are heaps of benefits to getting this right. To me, it's a no-brainer, but I would say that. Right, that's it for this one. Hopefully, if it hasn't at least answered your question, it's put you on the path to getting an answer. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up, leave me a comment with some feedback, and if you haven't already, don't be afraid to click subscribe, and I will see you for the next video.